Welcome back to the GKC show, everybody. Uh, we're here with Sam Whitaker again, and today we have Alec Otto, who is our special guest, who is head of marketing and community with uh, NFT.com. And yeah, well, let's kick right into it and uh, see what we want to talk about. Sam, I think Howdy. you had some. Yeah, some, I think uh, two to big things. Uh, first off, everyone set up your profiles. Um, <laughs> Alec, Alec, you can go ahead and uh, airdrop me those uh, H bars for that plug. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Yeah, and um, H bar NFTs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take whatever you got. <laughs> um, while you're smashing the like button, of course, uh, and subscribe and all that. Yes, um, yeah, I think the main thing I wanted to kick off with, we're going to get into a lot of stuff about NFT.com in general, but uh, following up on the heels of a couple of weeks ago when we talked to Vikram from Dow Lens, um, you know, this is. It, going to be a Dow run organization, uh, NFT.com. And it's coming along slowly as it should, uh, because we, you know, we have to learn to crawl on them, walk and them run. Um, but um, kind of, Alec, I wanted to get your thoughts. Where are we? Where are we going? Uh, obviously, whatever you can say about it is uh, is great. Um, and I think one thing is we, we kind of see our Dow organically coming together just through the Discord and Wagmeet and things like that. You know, you can kind of see the people who are more active, and you know, the Houdinis and the Jays and the and Trackins and uh, Brock and everybody. Um, I left a whole bunch of people out. Don't hate me. <laughs> that, um, in you know, the comments, hate him yeah. in the comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just off the top of my head. But uh, but yeah, you can kind of see the core of the DAO forming. Uh, like I said, organically. I think that's awesome. I think it'll really help us as we move into a more uh kind of traditional and solidified dow uh but yeah alec i'd love to get your thoughts just on the dow in general yeah well um you know ultimately nft.com is a community driven platform um we we aim to build this alongside a community to take feedback and to kind of un help be help nft.com as a product and as a platform be shaped uh by a community of people who are actually actively using the platform and have a you know interest in in seeing that that platform succeed um and through that, right, you you first need community, and uh, you know, the communities kind of have community is, is an interesting thing because it's both kind of like sometimes a little bit different difficult to measure in terms of like you know like uh, you know whether that be size or whether that be like uh, you know intensity of activity and such. But overall, what what it really comes down to is actually having kind of a core group of people who have some relative connection to one another and and recognize each other and and ultimately kind of form a base culture for whatever the community of your project is going to be so that's kind of like the place that we've been in right now um obviously we've had our community grow to a massive size and then uh from there it usually come has kind of a, a condensing period where um those who are really active start to kind of pop up and as you know like i know by name a large majority um of of the people in in our discord like some of the people you mentioned earlier um and ultimately those those people are going to be the ones who are kind of uh, ambassadors so to speak for for you know the brand and for uh what we're building and for to welcome new people into the community and to show them hey this is kind of you know how we do things here this is the culture of the project and being a part of a lot of other communities too i've i've seen you know each project has its own kind of culture in, in that regard, um, whether that be, you know, some, some are more focused on, you know, like the financial side, some are more focused on the, the, the art side and, uh, and, and as, as well as like development too. Um, and ultimately ours, I think, uh, is really about, uh, you know, testing and building with a company that's, that's building a product. And that's been the coolest thing, you know, having this public, uh, or this private beta program has allowed us to really have a, a super unique workflow where we're taking instant feedback directly from the community every single day to fix, adjust, you know, change course on different things. And that's only going to expand as we move forward. Um, ultimately we want to put as much, um, you know, kind of, uh, shaping and decision-making in the hands of the community as possible. Um, and you know we're we're currently exploring tools for how that that will take form. I, I think that you're right. Community is a very difficult thing to measure, uh, and specifically the quality of the community content. Which you know, I, I'm a member of a number of different Discord channels, and there are some Discord channels that are very active that have a lot of content flowing through it, but it's really all just Pepe memes, and. <laughs> And I, I, it's very refreshing to be in in the GKC 
uh, lounge and there'd be really meaningful conversations happening. You know, maybe there aren't a hundred people that are all contributing actively to the conversation, but the conversation that's having that's happening is very meaningful. At least I find. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I mean, I find myself like if, you know, everybody's really busy, if I haven't checked in for a couple of days, like, even if I don't have anything to say, I'll just step in a lounge and say, hi to everybody. How's everybody doing? Like, you know, I, I find myself generally invested in, you know, especially the people that we've actually met, but even people we haven't met who you just have talked to a bunch. And uh, yeah, I just want to stop in and say, hi, hey guys, I'm doing okay. Just really busy. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> um, and I, I don't, I can't really think of another community that I'm a part of right now that I feel that way about. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. I, I think, um, you know, at, at least as it, as it currently stands, uh, that kind of, uh, culture that 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 we're forming around having critical discussions about the NFT space, whether that be you know wallet security, or if you know we had an amazing discussion the other day after someone had uh, unfortunately had their Genesis key stolen about you know who's who's kind of you know who who's like the responsible responsible person there should should platforms get involved in you know flagging stolen NFTs or not and should they help or should they not and uh, you know it's conversations like that on topics that haven't really been fleshed out too much in the space yet that I think are really valuable um and that's what gets me really excited about building a platform that is so community driven is that uh ultimately uh we're we're kind of um i mean well a lot a lot of the the kind of uh ideation and iteration of the web3 space happens through community whether that be public on twitter or private in other communities um but we have that happening in real time in our own community now do you uh, do you think that um nft.com will have some tools that will help with security and uh, and you know i know it's it's really tough because a lot of it's social engineering people out of out mm -hmm. of their properties um, yeah. but i didn't know if nft was nft.com was looking to put some tools together to help stop that so we've been we had um We've had a lot of meetings <laughs> about this and a lot of discussions internally. Um, it, it's something that 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 we 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 kind of keep coming back to and uh, and thinking about. Um, ultimately, we there there are some really core problems in the space right now um, around security, and uh, it but those also factor into how you onboard new people too. Um, because as much as, uh, you know, w there's, there, there's a side of, of the crypto space that, that says, okay, you know, not your keys, not your crypto. If you lose, you know, your stuff, or if you make a bad decision, that's on you personal responsibility, which I'm personally a fan of, you know, I grew up in the, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna say early internet era, but it was a little bit more wild west than it is now. And that's kind of how I have always enjoyed things. Uh, and I've I've gotten scammed before. I think everyone in crypto has had some type of a thing where they were moving too quickly. They didn't check what they were looking at. And then, bam, you've lost right. something. Right. Um, if you haven't been scammed yeah. yet, you're not doing it right. <laughs> I mean, well, no, you are. I would not encourage. I would not encourage that behavior. But at the same time, yeah, it's uh, it, it it's almost an inevitability. Um, at, out of you know pure, if if you have a, a hundred you know attempts to scam someone there's a chance that one of them actually is successful uh, and that doesn't matter how tight you are in your security so that ultimately is uh you know even playing to to the to the advocate of you know not your keys not your crypto there's a lot of people out there who just aren't okay with that that's not a lifestyle that they're very comfortable with and you know if we want to pull people away from traditional finance and and you know have people like you know storing storing value on blockchains and and uh you know, uh, holding holding cryptocurrency and get them into the space, or you know, of, of owning you know artwork that you don't own physically, you own digitally. Uh, you know, it's scary to not have a fallback. You know, if if I get locked out of my bank, I can call my bank, and be like, hey, you know, this it's me. What's up? Can you get me back in? Um, and I think a lot of people are very comfortable with that. And there, we're going to need other on ramps into the crypto space outside of a public and private key. Um, in order to see bigger adoption, um, especially for kind of, uh, I guess, the broader scale of crypto. Um, I could also be wrong, though. And, you know, it could just be a cultural thing where we all end up moving more towards a, you know, kind of, you know, you live and die by your own sword uh, type of type of financial system. But uh, it's definitely a hindrance. So long story short, bringing back to the topic. Uh, yes, we're thinking about these things. Uh, abstraction of um, of of i guess you know sign on into your wallet and things is something that 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 we're thinking about um 
especially as it pertains to uh, make, making it easier for people who aren't in the NFT space to get into the NFT space. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, we've talked about that before on, uh, here that, you know, for mass adoption, there's going to have to be some kind of a semi custodial wallet system because people are going to want to sign in with their phone number or their email address and mm -hmm. they're going to want some kind of forgot password protection. They're not going to, they're, they're not going to invest the amount of money that, this space is eventually going to take in if all of a sudden their entire net worth can be gone. It's just yeah. not it, so it, it goes, it goes back. I think to that whole web three is a little bit pie in the sky thing. We're going to end up at web 2.5 or web 2.75, somewhere like that, where it's, where it's as many of the good things of decentralization as we can bring in. But at the end of the day, there has to be some kind of like, oversight centralization something and that's where i think DAOs are really going to come in i think how that evolves and with all of this stuff when we talk about it like these conversations that we have on podcasts the conversations you have on meetings the conversations we have all the time we're essentially writing the book on all this stuff this stuff right now as in real time i mean we're like just being parts of the web3 community a part of the web3 community we're creating what are going to be the best practices down the road and some of that's going to be due to us screwing up <laughs> and yeah and somebody in the future saying, wow, that was a bad idea. Don't do that. <laughs> and that's okay. That's part of the growth process and part of the creation process. Yeah, it, it is tricky, though, because, you know, having those the centralized uh, systems of recovery, though, also open up different attack vectors, though, for those those same accounts, for those same people who were scared of, you know, not being able to remember their password. Well, now you have, uh, you know, a, a traditional login that can be breached. You could take over someone's email and then recover the password that way in the same way that people break into different exchanges and such uh, pretty frequently. There's obviously ways to uh, make that process better. But uh, as you make things more secure, you also increase more friction, um, which also makes it harder to get people in to do this stuff. Because uh, ultimately, we're, mm -hmm. we're all competing with uh, Kind of very instant gratification uh which you know is it's not necessarily a bad thing obviously the the more seamless things are for users the better but um it's a balance and uh it's a really tough balancing balancing act and then there's the whole problem of, of authentication which is a whole other can of worms in the space that people are trying to solve for so um i mean all of this stuff is a tough needle to thread dows are a tough needle to thread custodial wallets mass adoption i mean the cross chain um communication and transactions mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's going to be you know we talk about like the big events that are going to be kind of seismic for for web3 i mean cross some kind of a cross-chain solution that's that's secure and immutable um you know mass adoption via some kind of a custodial wallet and, you know these things that are going to happen that are just going to bring so many people into the space i mean the numbers are probably out of date but it's uh you know the stats that jordan shared a few months ago with four billion um internet users and seven million people who have interacted with an nft so mm -hmm. i think we kind of get tunnel visioned a lot because we're in this community we talk about it all the time so we forget that most people have absolutely no idea what we're talking about and mm -hmm. how do we educate how do we grow the the whole ecosystem i mean that's that's it's incumbent upon all of us to be thinking about that because that's the only way it works for everybody yeah absolutely alec are you following um the nillion project at all yeah. Uh, so, and Andrew Misanto and I are good yeah. friends. Uh, I actually l learned a lot about what I know about crypto from him. Um, I, when I first got into the the space, uh, it's a funny story. I was like a starving artist in LA and we actually met at music school, crazy enough. Um, and, uh, I, at one point I was like, Hey, uh, I would love to just learn from you. Can I just study <laughs> under you for a good minute? And, uh, you know, the, the rest was history ended Smart. up being at a really, a really good time in 2017 got started with Hedera. But yeah, definitely following the Nillion, Nillion so, project. I'm really excited about so that. So do you think that that solves a lot of the problems there are in this bit? Like, for example, I'll give right click save as an example, right? So so your mm -hmm. NFT is out there and people can see what it is. And, it, and if it's just a static image, they can right click save it. And it's my understanding that Nillion will be able to save an image as these particles that no one else can actually see what it is, but you can still retrieve it. Do, is that something that nft.com is looking i know this is still way out in the future mm -hmm. because they're still in very early development stages but but is that going to be a tool set that solves some problems and also potentially with with logging in where you can have your key distributed amongst uh, a network of people that no one mm -hmm. can see except for yourself 
I think that comes down to what the use case is, right? Um, it, it's 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 brilliant technology. I don't know if if what what we are doing in the NFT space, at least as it currently stands, with the NFT space mostly being access passes and images, uh, you know that 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 being art. Um, I from and again, I uh, I Andrew, I need to watch, I need to rewatch and 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 reread the white paper a few more times. Um, but but from my understanding of, of their their project, uh, it's the ability to manipulate and do operations and um, you know analysis on large sets of data or data of any kind that's supposed to remain private to some aspect, um, which is is a really important thing, right? Manipulating data and working with data without having full access to that data is important, especially if we look at like what the you know the artificial intelligence space is going to be in the future, uh, and as what it is right now, you know it's ter it's massive massive amounts of of uh, of, of data, uh, in in these very you know well put together sets, and that has that is so so valuable um i i think it, it, i'm not a data analyst I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a data scientist um but from what i understand uh you know there is a lot of value wrapped up in those data sets and those aren't something that people are just willing to just be like yes screw it here you go i open to the public um but to some extent you could then charge for access to those data sets data sets to then do either you know training or do whatever it is you're going to do to you know training neural you know, new neural networks and things. Um, but there's other operations too. But, you know, I guess to what, uh, you know, to how NFT.com may play into part with that, uh, as NFT, as far as NFTs go, there are situations where NFTs may want to have some type of data that's only revealed to the holder. I think Board Ape Yacht Club did a little something with that, with like a magazine type thing. Um, I think I saw that on OpenSea a little while back. And, uh, and I thought that was interesting where it was like, you know, whatever the asset was, was only revealed by having ownership. It's something that's relatively easy to solve in the aspect of, okay, you could just token gate a file behind a website. Right. That's fine. Um, but, uh, you know, and for now, that's okay. You know, you don't need a brand new technology for that. But as time goes on and, you know, whatever that data or information that you want private becomes you know, more important that it remains private, maybe having something that allows you to see it, but not extract it will become valuable. Gotcha. So now, are there any other projects out there where you're, cause I found like when I was following Hedera that I felt that I was always waiting for a project to turn a key on something to, uh, that makes it possible to do something else. Now, Are, are there mm -hmm. any projects that nft.com has got their eye on where you're kind of waiting them for them to execute on something so that you can do something other than other than other than total <laughs> I mean, because when that, that turns good. on it's like a waterfall i, mean, I yeah. imagine that's, that's <laughs> number Niagara one Falls. on the list of every meeting uh jordan <laughs> walks in and he says okay what's the status of holidays nuts all right, now let's move on to everything else. That's where it is in my head. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I can really only speak personally on this um, yeah. uh, because uh, you know, I, I, it would be, uh, I, I would be amiss to to speak on behalf of the company for it. But um, I will say that I keep a very close pulse on the NFT space in general. Um, and I'm always, uh, I'm participating in Mints probably like once a week, every other week of mm -hmm. some type of a project that I've been following. Um, you're just throwing my ether away, but mainly to kind of explore <laughs> the space a little bit and try to, you know, like I, I like to kind of get ahead on projects that I think have a lot of merit and value. Uh, one of them that I thought was pretty interesting was Table Land. Um, the what the idea of table? table table land i believe it's table lands um they had a cool nft drop with some beautiful art that's what caught my eye but the thing that i thought was interesting though was i guess the it, their nft drop was more of a um a showcase for uh what a what a new service that that they've built can do and uh if i'm understanding it correctly it allows uh, a much much easier manipulation of metadata um for existing nfts which is something that i'm really interested in, in the aspect of dynamic nfts right art that changes based on external factors um and i think that is a really interesting and very unexplored area um especially like in the aspect of having like a very high-end piece of art or a very unique piece of art that that changes whether that be color aesthetic look um with whether that be season block height gas prices whatever it is i know that there were a I had heard of a couple projects. I don't know them by name that were exploring that a little bit, but uh, anything that helps to push 
that forward, I think is really interesting because I, really I cool. like the idea that, you know, metadata is frozen forever for some projects. That's cool. You know, your, your art lives on forever so long as Eep does. But what's more interesting to me is it being dynamic and living in that aspect with the world around it. So if the, and then you're that, talking about, so if the attributes of your NFT were linked somehow to an exterior source through a chain mm -hmm. link, um, uh, whatever like it ends up being or something like that right so yeah. when it's warm out right if the or if the chain link oracle for temperature says that it's 85 degrees out then your your nft has sun shining in the background exactly like you know it, it could be it, you could do really interesting cool. stuff with that just like a crazy idea would you know you could have like maybe like an avatar of yourself and wherever you are in the world the weather behind you matches whatever the weather is in that part of the world that you're in dynamically mm -hmm. and there's just a lot of cool stuff you can do with that um and, you know, especially when I think about, you know, how people represent themselves online, if digital avatars, uh, and, and I think the, I'm not totally sure how big digital avatars are going to be. I, for, I, it's, right, I, I kind of am either that's going to be everything and we're going to have very split <laughs> identities or I'm completely wrong. And that's not the case, um, as with the majority of my predictions, but, uh, in that aspect, having something dynamic that also is dynamically affected by you, whether that be, you know, wearables and things that track your health, your, you know, what you're doing and things like that. There's just a lot of cool stuff that you can do to kind of start interconnecting your digital and your physical identity. Wow, so, it's a non-fungible mood ring, essentially. <laughs> essentially, yeah. It's, I, uh, that. I should have done it. But I mean, how, how, how dope would that be on Twitter? You know, if, if you're, if you're, you know, PFP or avatar is like changing based on, you know, what you do in your real life just seamlessly the, well, be, people be are gonna wanna, right so so if i have an avatar that is um uh, not just a pfp but an actual you know 3d file that's an avatar mm -hmm. that i can move through a meta space um i'm i'm gonna want to change the clothes and stuff on that and if i can mm -hmm. dynamically change so it's so that thing just stays the actual nft with a with a, a changing wardrobe that i can go through then i think that's an a, a useful i mean that's there already i mean digital wear wearables i think that's yeah you know, yeah but it's been... not necessarily right now linked to permanently linked within that nft metadata right? you have, yeah you already yeah. have avatars that you can change and put different clothes and outfits on and that's cool but i you know I've, that bridge and again it comes down to i think when fortnite does it then the rest of the world <laughs> mm. is gonna is gonna jump into it because they're the use case that seems like they have all of the right pieces but none of it is blockchain yet but in the well i i think to some degree you have to ask yourself why go blockchain there right you know if it's 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 one of those if it's not broke don't fix it type things and and if it if it hurts their bottom line then i don't see why why fortnite would want to go to that um right. i do have some some ideas and some theories about like you know how the gaming space might factor into it but um you know, uh, you know I, I will say this too. I have seen some other projects out there right now that are using 1155s. 1155s too, um, uh, which are an, another form of NFT yeah. uh, where um, you can like essentially, like one of them that I was looking at had like uh, little like magician characters and stuff and you could buy like new staffs for them or different little like pets and avatars and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's basically Neopets with more steps. <laughs> um, but at the same time, uh, it is cool. And 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 that's kind of the, the the first step. But then, you know, again, like like I said about the gaming space, uh, the big question is why? You know, why are you moving to a blockchain system? Like what is the, what is the thing you're solving for that can't be solved with a typical kind of system one of the things that i think is really interesting in that space is uh you know being able to essentially get you know exit uh your your assets and and and, and the time that that you've spent it put input into a game uh you know when i was growing up i put endless amounts of time in a game called runescape and uh the account ended up you know being being pretty good worth worth probably a couple hundred bucks or something like that but there was no ever there was never a way to exit you know when i wanted mm -hmm. to leave the game there was no way for me to sell those items and if i did it might ban the account um when you know that's considered in games rmt or real market trading which is generally frowned upon and most games have bans against it uh it's also really hard to control and it also propagates a lot more cheating because then industries form around this rmt because people in you know uh countries with less will actually spend all day playing that game mm -hmm. for in-game in currency and then selling that to people in you know uh more developed areas um that have more you know cash and less time and then those people want to get ahead in the game so they spend their real world dollars for in-game currency these markets already exist and they're really hard to police so 
the i guess the big area that i see that's interesting for like gaming adoption is um you know being able to bring these markets uh into something that's at least transparent and visible and you know okayed by 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 the game and then it also makes it easier for that game to then flag okay you know this is cheating you know like uh this is like like a cheated asset versus a not cheated asset so yeah i, I think to your point about yeah i agree with you why would gaming go into web3 you know full on but i think i think there's options for kind of like a a, a ta uh, you know an attachment a web3 attachment type of mm -hmm. thing like what i'm uh, I, what, what i'm imagining is you know if you could take kind of the soulbound token thing where you could take some of the things that you do in one game and some of the experience that you have i mean let's say if it's a, like a first person shooter game and you're a you know kick-ass sniper well maybe you that could be associated with your soulbound token and when a new game launches you could take that experience to a new game and say okay you're already a good sniper because the you know the gameplay is pretty similar so you can port that in um something like that maybe um, but it's again, it's it's kind of like the bridging the gap between Web two and Web three, and that kind of leads very nicely into the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, so NFT.com is uh, it's a website. It's a you know mm -hmm. it's a, exists in Web two. Um, NFT.com is NFT centric, which is Web three. Um, how do you see that? relationship happening uh as we move forward and as more and more things are developed on the site i mean is is it a web 2 site that has web 3 functionality is it pre predominantly a web 3 site is it uh yeah just how do you see that evolving because i think you know when we were talking a little bit earlier about cross chain compatibilities and things like that um there's a lot that goes into it and being nft centric i think will be at the center of it so so where do you see that i think it kind of comes down to being a great onboarding or a, a great a great on-ramp for the wide majority of people out there who don't know what an nft is don't care don't have interest whatever it is um you know we have a really unique opportunity to be one of the main first points of contact for people who are brand new to the space um it's actually apparent in our discord server you can go in there right now and i guarantee you every like we we get uh open seas customer support we get look looks rare customer support we get uh <laughs> blockchain customer support inquiries all the time right people being like hey uh my my nft transaction is going through can you guys help right and although those people are you know not quite in the right place um it's a great it's a great uh you know i the the domain is a fantastic area for us to be able to be like hey welcome you know <laughs> this isn't us but let's let let us share a little bit about what nfts are why they're valuable how they work um or why they're not valuable in in, in both directions and just kind of be in a, an objective platform that allows us to help bring in more of these people and that kind of goes back to right the, the the conversation we had a little bit earlier about um you know sign on and things like that and uh you know making things easier for for the user uh ultimately uh, the more that the, the less difficulty or the more difficulty that we can remove from the user experience of someone who's brand new to the space the better um that is so so important uh so that's kind of what i see us being is is really a, a platform to connect uh newcomers to the web3 space to um to plenty of educational resource and then also help them find their kind of uh, their community within the space. Because that's another big part of the NFT space, at least right now, um, and Web3 in general. It's like find communities that you find interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Web3 is merely kind of an, an extension of all of the things that, that we know and love in our daily lives today, just put into kind of a different medium, um, uh, utilizing some really cool technology. So. Uh, how can we help people find the things that they're already naturally interested in within the NFT space? So, yeah, so you see, really well sorry, go ahead, sir. Well, yeah, that's really well put. Um, I think that it, it kind of the thing it made me think of is that once you're in Web3, there are so many barriers to entry for so many things are removed. Mm -hmm. So if you're an artist, getting your art out there to the world, if you're a designer, getting your designs out, like so many things where you can, once you're in the Web3 space, you can do pretty much anything. But unfortunately, there are a lot of barriers to entry for average people to get into the web web free space to kind of pass that, you know, token gate or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. in order to get in and, and start doing those things. So having having an opportunity or having a platform where they can come in and feel safe and feel secure and feel like, OK, we're, we're going to walk through this and, and get there. I mean, it just opens everything up to so many people having access to the amazing features of Web3. So. 
So, uh, yeah, I think that's really well put. And I'm, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we touched on that. Yeah. Do, yeah. You see, do you see education then as being a core part of what NFT.com does, where a big section of it is a place where we just onboard people into maybe not necessarily crypto in general, but into NFTs? Like people have just gotten to know crypto and now we're the people that help them understand NFTs. I think we have a really kind of Im important role to play in the aspect of at least helping people like at, at least streamlining the initial process and making it something that's relatively fun and easy to do to kind of just, you know, get set up, get your wallet, get it, you know, find an NFT project that that you like, find out why you're even interested in NFTs in the first place, uh, right? Because a lot of people just kind of hear, okay, I should be interested in NFTs, uh, OpenSea, spend money on a collection that they have no idea about but they bought the nft just because someone told them to buy an nft right my brother-in-law said to do this <laughs> yeah exactly right um so i think providing some context for why they why they should even bother in in, in the first place is is really important um because again you know like they're uh we we aim really to create tools and enable the creativity and uh and 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 uh, uh, capabilities of creators while streamlining the process for consumers, right? Um, the people who want to collect NFTs or want to purchase them or are looking for an access pass, um, whatever it is, a mem membership pass, uh, that process should be very streamlined, very easy to do, e easy easy to get through and clear um, in such a way where people understand exactly what they have now and how they got it. And then on the creator side, uh, you know, we want to enable the tooling, like like what Sam mentioned, um, has really happened in the NFT space. Creators are now able to make scarce art uh, digitally, which is fantastic. You could never do that as someone who came from the music industry space. It's a absolute brush, breath of fresh air. Yeah. So. It's exciting times. It's fun to see what everybody is going to be doing with it. And uh, we're excited that uh, that you're building it and that we can be a part of it. Me too. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the very last thing, though, you did uh, promise us that you would uh, give us a firm date for when the marketplace is going to launch on this call. So, ha 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 ha. No. <laughs> but, uh, 48 but, hours. But, you know. <laughs> We got a lot of stuff in progress. Um, you know, if 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 people want to know more, definitely uh, join our Discord server. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Those are like the the kind of two main points of contact where where we're, we're really providing as as much detail and update as possible. And you know, as you guys know, uh, if you have a Genesis key, you get early access and you get to start testing out beta features now. And you get to yell at us as to you know what you like, it's what the, you don't like, and what you want. Part of it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think that that pretty much wraps it up for the show. Unless uh, either you have anything else, last thoughts you want to toss in? No, I think I'm good. I think, I mean, down the road, we'll definitely do a follow up a second. Uh, Absolutely. I, we could probably talk for hours. <laughs> Let's be honest. We're a bunch oh, of yeah. like three So. <laughs> <laughs> So awesome. Well, thank you very much for watching the show, everybody. Smash the like button, leave comments. Uh yeah, and uh we'll see you next week. Uh yeah. <laughs> Bye y'all. Take care. Fantastic. See you soon. Have a good one.